demonstrate the functionality of this Xantrax uh, 1750 plus inverter and in order to show the date that we are working at right now I just want to show the screen of the computer on my shop desk which shows here we're on uh, July 26th right now this is yesterday's news broadcast from NBC showing that um, what the date is here when we're going about this. So to start with I'll show you the setup that we have here and I've got a 200 amp battery down here which I hope you can see it be pretty dark. It's a 160 pound deep cycle 200 amp hour battery that I use in my shop for running my spot welding assembly and what I've got is my booster cables that are uh, either 0 or 4 gauge I think they're 0 gauge wire and you can see I've got them separated with a bubble pack envelope so they don't short out between the two terminals on the back of the inverter and the inverter when I turn it on uh, we're getting the battery voltage now of 13 because there's no load on it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this heater in and uh, put some load on the inverter and see what happens. So what I want to demonstrate here is a common mistake that people make when they get an inverter and they put a large load on it. The inverter does not support the load and they think the inverter is faulty you see that in reviews all the time. What in fact they're not realizing is, is that the large load plates is such a uh, strain on the battery's output, it draws the voltage down to the point where the inverter has the low voltage cutoff kick in and shut the inverter down. And so I noticed that first when I would be using the inverter in my van and uh, I would turn something on to cook and uh, it would work for about a minute while the batteries were fully charged then the sag would uh, bring them down to the point where the inverter would shut and I would have to run the motor which would then be uh, kicking in the alternator which helped bring the inverter up so when I turn this on without any load on it it's showing us the battery voltage of 12.8 and when I load it nothing happens because I'm now putting just 750 watts at 120 volts on there. Now watch what happens when I leave the load on. I shut the inverter off. Watch these two displays because you'll momentarily see here the load being shown and uh, you'll quickly see it before the inverter has the low voltage cutoff and you can see what happened there with the voltage. Watch the voltage drop until the inverter shuts off. And I will move it over here so that you can see what happens with the load when I do that. Now watch the elements in this heater momentarily come on when I turn the inverter on. See that? And then they go off. So what we've seen here is the inverter is working until the voltage sags below the point where it automatically shuts off and again we go back now and we see that this is what's happened. Now we've got the voltage down to 12.7 on that battery load. So then how is it that we would be able to use this inverter successfully to run this large load? it would be um, you would need to run your vehicle and uh, have a constant source of voltage that would address the large load. Now we're going to just show one other large item on here for the same effect. So now I've got this electric impact wrench which draws 7.5 amps at 120 volts which is uh, pretty much a 1500 watt load and what I'm going to do now is show what happens again when I activate 
the trigger on the impact wrench so that it is placing a load and then turn the inverter on. You'll see that it'll work momentarily again until it sags the voltage down and the inverter has automatic shut off. So here we go. You can see there that it did work until we reached that low voltage cutoff point. So now what I've done is I've put a charger onto this battery and it's throwing 10 amps of current right now into the battery which is boosting it up. Now of course that's just a fraction of what an alternator in your RV truck or car could put out to support the inverter but let's see if that's enough to now support doing some draw on this heater which again does 750 and 1500 watts depending on which mode you pick on the switch here you see there you have the first two low modes are 750 and high is 1500 watts so what we're going to do is first of all turn it to a low mode and we see now that the inverter is supporting it and what has happened here with the voltage. Again we'll turn it off and you'll see the voltage goes back up to 12.4 here. We turn it on with a 750 watt draw and you'll see the inverter drops down to 11.8 and you can see here that the heater is just working. I go to the other mode which is just simply the top elements and we go to 11.7 volts and now I'm going to move it up to 1500 watts of load you can hear that the inverter is telling you you're right near your low voltage cutoff. It is going and supporting the full heater, but the voltage is just getting down to the point where it's telling you that pretty soon you're going to have to shut off. You can see here then that down here, here's your bar, which is uh, telling you your AC power in watts that is being drawn and um, there we go so while your battery can hold up to 11 volts or above you are going to get the inverter functioning properly at 1500 watts now something else that we need to mention too is remember this is a square wave inverter and so there are some devices that don't work with a modified sine wave such as induction cooktops. You can run your appliances off of this and your power tools. Uh, microwaves will work, but I would suggest you go and use Google and look up what things will work with the modified sine waves and what will not, depending on what you're planning on using it for.